I was asked to give my top 10 picks for books on evangelism. And I thought instead of, because there's so many, so instead of doing exactly 10 top books, I'm going to do a selection of books that take you into the different aspects of what is a huge subject and of which there have been oceans of ink expended, acres of forest chopped down to create a library of books on, on the, the subject of evangelism. There's so many different ways you can look at this subject. But here's, here's, here's the 10 really useful ones that are great to have on your, on your shelves for, for reference. Let's see, I brought them right here. I dug them out a moment ago. And I want to start with the one that I think celebrates the heart of the gospel. And this is Alan Scott's, Alan Scott's very fine book, Scattered Servants. Now it's quite anecdotal, it just tells lots of stories and it comes from a particular frame, but it's the frame that I want to emphasize. The frame is simply this, this is a, a shifting, a shifting worldview. And it's very simply, we're not trying to invite the world into our buildings. We are liberating the people who gather in our buildings to go into the world. It's not a, an original idea. It's an obvious idea. As soon as you say it, you realize, though, that it is a radical idea. And so we are servants who are scattered. You see this picture at the back on the front cover of, of a it's, a, it's like a powder that's been thrown onto a white screen and it scatters. So Scattered Servants by Alan Scott. So I think this is, this is the heart, the heart base, the heart base of, of what any discussion of evangelism is about. Okay, and following on from that, we have some more conventional approaches. This is, this is uh, I Once Was Lost. It's not that conventional. This is subtitled What Postmodern Skeptics Taught Us About Their Path to Jesus, Don Everts and Doug Schaub. So this is very good because it encourages you to understand where we are today, who we have to deal with. It is a bit white middle class and it's within Western culture, and our perspective should be a lot wider than that. But within those parameters, this is really, really helpful. It also makes you realize that there is a common need for good news. No matter where you, you position yourself in the world or in a, in a philosophy or in a, an, an agenda. And the, these guys do a very good job saying there is still common ground there is common ground and dealing with people who might describe themselves as atheists there's a lot of common ground even within postmodern skeptics and to do that they use a very very conventional almost old-fashioned evangelistic line i once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now i see Okay, so this is a good book, very interesting, very good. On a wider level is the, the idea of the church itself, which connects both of these books. And this is by Stuart Murray. And Stuart Murray comes from a, an Anabaptist background, which is very important because he's not speaking so much of the attractional church as the missional community. It's that same trajectory that we're talking about with Alan Scott, but this is a more of a theological background to it. It's called the church after Christendom. So Christendom is the story of the, the, the gathering, the church culture, church being involved with politics and kingdom and establishment and institution. And saying, okay, these things are breaking up and, and, and it is actually good news that there's a separation. In, in my view, there's a, it's good news that, that, that there's a lot to learn from an Anabaptist theology. And this guy lays it out. What is the church like after Christendom? Now that those days of institutional supremacy are fracturing, 
what next what next that's the thesis that he that he uh, he starts with it's one of the best books i've read on the reshaping of the church for mission in our changed cultural context okay and as a wide view biblical context book is arthur glasser it's not an easy book to read but this is it's called announcing the kingdom announcing the kingdom is a an overview of the whole bible and picking up on one central theological theme that mission is the heart of god from day one to today and he, he so, so it's a biblical theology, but it's also a missiological textbook. It's, it's, as I say, it's quite complex. It's, it's described on the back as monumental. This comprehensive study establishes a profound foundation for a theology of mission. That's why I like it. Very good. Very good. OK, and these are all background books, apart from the Alan Scott, which is very, very practical, very like now you now what are you going to do about it so it's very important that when you discuss a subject like this that it doesn't become just buried in theory that it becomes an avenue into practice and this is the subject of this uh, larger book it's called the study of evangelism exploring a missional practice of the church so this is a composite volume and it has many many authors some of them you'll know and you'd have heard of and read before some of them you you won't know quite so much but it's good it brings together a wide selection let's see it's slightly older than the other ones let's see 2008 2008 yeah okay so it's very good because it brings a variety of contrasting viewpoints into one house it's like a little library in itself so it's, it's worth it it's worth it many of these books can be got second hand right now from abe books which i thoroughly recommend you could get them at a fraction of the cost it's an international network of second hand books just plug in the title you'll find it and you can find it for pennies so don't go to the to the new bookshops first or, or amazon where it's just going to be a, a large price okay and speaking of new methodology what the, the task of the uh, of our week together is that you start to think about a method of evangelism and critique it give it its strengths and its weaknesses and one book which is very helpful for this is evangelism which way now okay mike booker and mark island this is good because it takes some of the most well-known modern practices of evangelism Alpha, Emmaus, Cell Church, and a few, a few others, contemporary strategies for evangelism. And it critiques them, but it critiques them in an honest and a, a debating way that's not theoretical, but, but useful and, and intentional and church-based. Church okay, so this is very, very good. It's very good background for your essay. You'll see in the last section, there is a number of resources after we've looked at the days, you'll see a number of resources there. And that, that's just a selection of opportunities for you to consider a method of evangelism, one that attracts you. You, you. By all means, go for Alpha or something that's very well known or like street evangelism, beach mission, anything, anything that, that, that uh, to which you feel personally invest, uh, invested or you'd like to, or you're, you're considering it, something that you're already doing. OK, so this is very useful for that kind of enterprise. Now, the next one by uh, Kevin Harney is called Organic Outreach for Ordinary People. And again, this came out. I think this is about 20 years out, is it? Just one second. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, 2009, two, oh, so only 11 years. Two, uh, organic Outreach. Or got, um, Organic outreach for ordinary people. Now, I like this because it debunks the idea that this is for evangelists, capital E, or special people, or ordained people. Or Now, we know that that's not true, but there's a subtext of a kind of feeling that 
we ought to leave these things to the professionals. It can feed into a kind of a laziness. And Alan Scott, certainly, and, and Kevin Harney are saying this is for everybody. Go into all the world and make disciples is for everybody. It's not for professionals. And it suggests ways. It's mostly based on what I would call the Jehanine method of evangelism, which is conversation and encounter and meeting people. And I noticed this, you know, just a personal anecdote is, is like I've, I've been spoken at house churches hundreds of times and I've done my little things preaching over here. And then, but the real business of ministry has gone on over there when the washing up is, you know, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not something that is platform based. It is something that is people, people based, not, not projects, it's, it's people. That's why my, my wife is a, a very good evangelist and I'm a, I'm a teacher. So we, we work it together. Okay. But this is really emphasizing, I think the key word that they've made bigger than anything else is ordinary ordinary and i like that i like that this is fuss free clutter free evangelism mostly one-to-one -one. sharing good news naturally and there's a photograph of two people meeting on a bench okay okay now then by way of a contrast i'm just going to put up this this word that i'm pretty sure you'll have heard of before this is rick warren's the purpose driven life now, the reason I put this here be, is because it is easily the most well-known of all these books. And the reason it's most well-known is, is, is because it's been incredibly successful. And it's an example, a very good example of course evangelism or course discipleship instruction that develops all kinds of things at the same time, that develops a, an opportunity for community, an opportunity for teaching, but also for fellowship, for caring and sharing, for mutual prayer, for building church where there virtually wasn't church before, in a real, real church in the sense of Acts 2, uh, you know, at the end, where they, they met together, they devoted themselves, they prayed, they broke bread, and favor was on them. So I think it's worth, I know this is an, an older book now, and it's been around the houses a lot. Let's see, 2002. Okay, so it's so it's had 20 years of shelf life, because Rick Warren was using it there, it sounded like uh, before that. So it's a 40-day spiritual journey transforming your answer to life's most important question what am i what on earth am i here for what am i here for on earth so i think it's worth a mention because some of you will be part of churches that have used it and you will be part of churches that have used alpha it's quite similar to alpha in some 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 ways it's encouraging the people of god to come together and it's really really important so think about it even if you disagree especially if you disagree it's worth thinking about course evangelism and seeing if this is not right then what what is better what works better okay now bring two books together because they're very very useful to part of what we're going to do in the course this is uh, these are books by uh, kent brower whom you might have heard of one is a commentary on mark and Kent Brower, his, his original PhD thesis was on the discipleship motif, really, in, in Mark. So he went into it deeply for years and years. And, and this is the basically the product or one of the products of those, those intense studies into discipleship. The reason I'm interested in this and find it so useful is it because it provides a biblical background for what a disciple is. And it's hardly been bettered. It's great. It's great. So it's, it, it's worth getting hold of. You'll probably get him to sign it. <laughs> okay. So there you go. So th this is the commentary, Mark, a commentary in the Wesleyan tradition. Even to use the word Wesley is significant because Wesley understood what discipleship and scattered servants meant almost more than any other church leader in history really a fantastic model of what evangelistic praxis looks like you cannot just go and speak to people and announce things you have to disciple them go and make disciples 
with that's what our command is not go make converts it's a very challenging distinction okay so i find kent brower's commentary very helpful to understand what a disciple is the, the good and the bad and the the adequate and the less than adequate now one that goes alongside it is a kind of a key volume by him by kent brower living as god's holy people which takes the same trajectory but starts to look at the letters of paul and it's very helpful very helpful because there's one bible it's one truth truth is one uh, but it needs it needs dissecting a little bit so that we can understand it and part of our course is to look at what evangelism looked like in the letters of paul okay so i'm counting this as one volume one is to do with discipleship in mark the other is to do with god's people in in paul okay there we go and just uh, one or two more as we close and this is someone i don't know if you've read uh, leslie newbegin leslie newbegin provides a a prophetic insight he wrote some time ago now let's see well this is yeah 1986 1986 he brought out the expanded version of the Warfield Lectures at Princeton, 1984. So this is from a previous generation. But he's called it Foolishness to the Greeks. It's only a little book, but it's about how the gospel works in Western culture. What's so good and interesting about this is it is it's still relevant. If that's why I use the word prophetic. Do you remember in um, Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 12, isn't it, when when we're told, told about David's mighty men, and there's a bit, an intriguing sentence where it says, the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. And I think in every generation, there are men and women of Issachar. And, and Leslie Newbegin is one of those. So it's a prophetic insight into where we still are in Western culture. So you can almost take what he's saying here and, and extrapolate. And so I find it a very good, not quite biblical, but a lot of philosophical and theological background to where we live. And this is really expanded in a slightly newer book of his, which is called The Gospel in a Pluralist Society. I think it's a more recent one. Yeah, just a little bit, 1989. Yeah, he was he was really engaged with this. This is great. It's complex and it's challenging to me anyway, but it's, it's called The Gospel in a Pluralist Society, Leslie Newbegin. Okay, so here we go. So that's actually 12 books, but we'll call it 10 books because four of them are by two authors. So it, it works, 10, 10 top picks. And as I say, it's not an exhaustive uh selection it's a selection not an exhaustive view but if you get these on your library shelves you will begin to understand what it is that god wants us to do that's what i believe amen look forward to seeing you in class